Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is the last lesson, the week 8 uh, lesson of the uh, GS170. Uh, today we'll talk about the security, social ethical issues, and uh, uh, some of the ergonomics, that's how is our body adjusting to extended usage of a computer. So chapters 11 and 17 of our textbook uh, will cover more or less of the subjects I'm uh, discussing today. Um, so they will talk about cybersecurity. This is a very important uh, subject these days because uh, almost everybody using a computer and the internet and under this network environment or the ITC environment there are so much uh, issues of uh, security of our uh, data and uh, our identity. So we'll talk about that. Of course, this is a whole large subject worth several semesters worth of courses. So I'll just go a very uh, overview of the subjects. Then uh, there are some threats to the uh, computer system and the uh, thing known as a malware. Malware, what is that? That is a bad software. Where usually mean uh, something created for certain purpose. And uh, unfortunately, there's some bad people create uh, uh, the, this kind of a software, small piece of the software uh, that is intended to do the harm. So something like a virus or a worm, those kind of things. And then there are attacks to the email. Then uh, there, are, there are many issues that uh, many people using, well, they, almost everybody using a computer on the network or connected to everybody. In the case that we have a certain obligation and the uh, responsibility of uh, uh, social issues and the ethical responsibility. And the one last subject uh, that we don't have much time, so we'll just go briefly, is ergonomics. That ergonomics is that uh, more like a, uh, our body structure, our physiology that is, and uh, our computer environment. Well, for example, you uh, can strain your eyes and your uh, hands, arms, and your body, uh, your spine. So those kind of uh, uh, areas are well researched. And I'll just have a little bit of a uh, discussion on this subject. Okay, so let's go. So first thing we talk about is the security. We want to be safe in daily life and in our work. We don't want to get threatened or be harmed. So it is uh, uh, the dictionary, de the uh, definition is the freedom from risk or danger. So it's a safety and uh, in a way the secure means uh, safely maintained. Uh, then uh, freedom from doubt, anxiety or fear or confidence. This sounds all uh, more like a, a psycholo psychological effect and then we want to be a uh, feeling of uh, confidence, a uh, feeling of uh, trust that, oh, everything is just fine. Then degree of resistance to protect from harms. Then something that gives assured uh, safety, such as a group of or department of uh, private guards and calling uh, the security like that, and or measures adopted by government to prevent uh, prevent uh, is espionage or sabotage or attacks or measures adopted as a business or homeowners to prevent crime. So like uh, you, are, you are locking your door every day. There's a uh, security alarm just in case somebody intrude your fa the house. Uh, that's kind of a idea. So we want to uh, be safe first of all. We don't want any physical or property wise harm. Plus uh, uh, the psychologically, we don't want to feel always uh, worried about and fearful or the uh, uh, really uh, not sure about our com the uh, safety. So we want to have confidence on our safeties. So uh, the method of uh, 
uh, security we are interested in ITC is uh, computer security and the information security network and the internet security, data security, system security. There are so many the uh, different layer. For example, you want to have a safety of your installation or your computer be stolen uh, or the, somebody harming uh, your uh, the equipment. That's a kind of a physical uh, aspect of this uh, security. But that's uh, uh, also uh, also that the, uh, you may get some intrusion through the network that you don't want to do that. So network security and internet security is slightly different, but they have a, a certain uh, the components of differences. So anyway, that uh, the we are talking about the, the how uh, we feel safe when we got connected to others. But most important, definitely, is our data security. So uh, our information or data is the most important. We have information security and this data security are almost the same, but there's slight differences. I don't have time to discuss about that differences, but uh, the, uh, this uh, security uh, is most important. So we want make sure, we want to make sure uh, that our data is very safe from any intrusion. So uh, the model is that uh, the, while we are doing communication, so uh, the typical terms Alice and Bob, ABC, that kind of thing. So Alice is sending something to Bob. So through the network we do, but uh, there is some bad guy who's uh, intercepting it and uh, doing some kind of a changes or uh, from that leaked information the, that uh, uh, the information uh, gained uh, illegally, uh, this uh, person uh, may do some uh, harm to your system. That's what we don't want to do. Uh, want to see. So there are certain security uh, principles. So what do we want to achieve from our security model or security uh, situation or security measures? In the case that uh, one is a CIA model, it's uh, nothing to do with the CIA of the US government, but it's more like, like a, a confidentiality and integrity and the availability. That's what the CIA, uh, so-called the, the uh, triad. So uh, when we are um, maintaining and supporting our data, then we want to be confidential. That is only authorized people can access to it. And integrity means that uh, it should be uh, the uh, uh, change it or store it and uh, re retrieve the bag, but the, the no data part must be uh, incorrectly changed or altered. So uh, correctness of our data or uh, solidity of our uh, contents of the data, that's integrity and availability. We want make sh we want to make sure that our data is available whenever we want to use it. So that's a CIA model or CIA triad, but that is a little old model. So recently, more more. Uh, commonly used uh, uh, the model or the requirements for the security is a cane. Cane, it looks like this cane, uh, but that's just a, the uh, pronunciation wise only. So that's uh, the uh, um, acronym for C A I N. So this confidentiality and the integrity is the same. So uh, the uh, confidentiality means do not allow illegal user to access data and the information is correct, not change it or any way that altered or corrupt what they call it. It's like a food got corrupt over the time and you cannot eat. Same idea that the information got somehow uh, degraded into wrong type, then uh, the data is useless. So that's the kind of idea. Then uh, the A, instead of uh, the uh, the uh, uh, availability. Now we're talking about authentication. So uh, frequently that uh, this, uh, uh, we want to make sure someone says, oh, my name is uh, Chang Li. Then want to say, are you sure? Not that I'm that important person, but if I'm the uh, name of a president of, uh, uh, say, uh, the United States, 
then are you really that person? <laughs> Usually you know that, but anyway, so identify the legal, the, the legal user correctly. That's the idea, but authenticate. Authenticate is the truthness. So when you buy something, the, uh, when you buy something that's a genuine, not the fake, then we say, we say that one is uh, authentication or authentic uh, the products like that. So authentication, so ah, you are the really right person or right product or right object. That's the idea about identifying it. Uh, then non-repudiation is another interesting uh, the aspects of a, the a security in that that somebody did something and say, so, oh, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. That, no, you did it because here is the proof. So the whole system of security is made such a way that it can come into you and come and get you because uh, you made all the traces. So that's the idea. Or sometimes that availability is also very important aspect. So in CIA model, there was availability. So let's add that one too. So C, A, A, and uh, uh, we have integrity here and then the uh, N. So cane, but there's a one more A. By the way, availability is important one in terms of uh, uh, the uh, security issues because that it is available whenever uh, needed. So that uh, the typically we say, like for example, we want to do our net internet work, but suddenly the uh, uh, power's gone. That's no good, isn't it? So uh, there's a five nine model five nines, that is that 99.999%. So uh, we can allow once in a while 0 0.001% of uh, downtime or not available time. But the uh, most of the other times, so practically all other times, it should be available. So there's a five nine model, and uh, that's the requirement frequently for utility company for the power or uh, internet service providers. But the well, uh, you you may say, oh no, that's not true. That it's uh, down all the time <laughs> like that. Uh, so, then the uh, what we are worried about in security is the kind of attack. So there are active attack and the passive attack. Of course, the, our textbook doesn't say all those details, but I just thought that this is so important. So uh, the, I want to make sure. So uh, when we are talking about security, true sense of security is uh, prevention or some countermeasure against this kind of attacks. So active one is a proactive and attacker six a method to cause a problem. So without invocation, without I didn't do anything wrong, I didn't do any uh, attention, I didn't have any attention or any dealing with you, but you come to me and try to intrude something, steal something or damage something. So that is a, a, the kind of a tug uh, the dogs so that uh, are hitting you or beating you in the street. So that's the attacker six method to cause a problem. So that example is a malware. So malware, one more time, there's a bad software. We'll talk about that in separate uh, section. Uh, that is a virus and the Trojan and uh, the poison cookies, things like that. Then there's a DOS attack. Uh, this is K. So DAS attack means uh, uh, DAS uh, is uh, the denial of a service. So uh, the when once they, you hear about this DAS attack, what sometimes a DDoS attack. I'll talk about that on more. But uh, this attack is that one site is that they are attacking so much that it uh, got blocked up or it just uh, break down. That's the idea. And then uh, the intrusion, somebody comes into my uh, the uh, network space and uh, start uh, uh, searching through the data and uh, obtaining your data like that. Hijacking is when we have a, a communication con channel established, then they just uh, jumping over and they take it over. That's uh, like a hijacking a car. So that kind of uh, uh, the uh, action or bad 
behavior exists in the cyberspace. So uh, the cyber, uh, the, uh, special, the security specialist uh, trying to find the best measures and the, the methods keep changing. So uh, the countermeasures are keep devised, then new met the method of attack uh, comes and uh, try to measure uh, the countermeasure on that. Then there's uh, uh, some passive attack also, so, 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 so called reactive, proactive versus reactive. It's a very passive, so uh, you are not doing they really enacting yourself, but you just uh, sit and do any harm per se. So you just uh, listen to or observe observation uh, to gain the data. That's a passive attack. Of course, eventually it will do the harm. But at this moment, it does not break down anything or it doesn't show any kind of a downgrading of your system, anything like that. So usually say then. So eavesdropping is that somebody, uh, they, there's all communication going on and someone just listening to. Then piggybacking is that when you log in, then this guy, the bad guy, is coming together and logged in together and watching all the session together. That's uh, scary, isn't it? Uh, dump diving. <laughs> There's uh, this lady uh, jump. They dump diving into the trash can and try to search. That is that a lot of uh, valuable informations are discarded uh, carelessly. And then if uh, the, uh, uh, the, the any intruder is uh, the uh, uh, in, intending for, then uh, can go and search it through and obtain valuable information. So uh, when you have a uh, documentation, typically documentation being uh, thrown away, then there are very valuable information, including among others, a password being there that that can be a real disaster. Or that uh, when you are selling the date, the, uh, your computer or give out the, your the computer, you just left the hard drive as it is. So all the data is in there. Then it is uh, really uh, searching through by uh, the, the much more elegant way than just uh, uh, the uh, snooping into the smelly uh, dump. Uh, so that happens. That's a, again, it's a passive. It's a more like a, it is not directly harming you now, but eventually it will cause there uh, some kind of a damage. So active attack wise, that uh, the uh, there are, we are talking about uh, malicious code. That's a bad code. That is a uh, malware that is be planted. So we keep hearing about the virus, virus, and the vaccine, and then a uh, worm. Trojan horse. So what are they? So they are the part part, part of the uh, internet uh, the system uh, family <laughs> that who wants to uh, harm others just for the fun or for the benefit. So virus and the worm and Trojan horses. I'll explain the difference in a minute. And then there's a spyware, adware, and the ransomware. You heard about that. There are other wares, isn't it? So spyware is some software that just a snooping into. So remember in previous uh, the uh, uh, page uh, that there was uh, the, uh, hi the hijacking or the uh, piggybacking, then they can spy on us. So that's uh, spyware. Then there's some uh, adware, that is uh, some advertisers are popping up, popping up. That really bothers. And uh, if uh, the, some adware is uh, made such a way when you click it, then uh, they want to uh, answer some questions and it is made such a uh, kind of a clever way that you end up giving some kind of a, uh, input that uh, lead to your confidential information. That's no good. You heard about the ransomware a lot. Uh, from the newspaper. That is a software that once infecting your system usually goes to large uh, installations, so very sophisticated software, then they lock, they freezes all the uh, data. So they are in a way that uh, uh, lock up your data by some encryption key. So you cannot access your data. So for example, that happens to a lot to a 
the hospital. So hospital need uh, a lot of access to the patient data and uh, the uh, uh, this, uh, financial data and some administration uh, related uh, data and uh, uh, really the medical information. But those data are very specific and valuable to that hospital being frozen or locked. So you cannot use it because it's locked by some key. So then there will be a message coming in to the uh, administrator say that, okay, send me some money. Then uh, the uh, unless then we won't, but if you give uh, this much money, then we will uh, send you the key that will unlock whole thing. That's horrible, isn't it? And the one bad thing is that you heard about these days that there's a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a real coin, but it's a, it can be used as a kind of a money. The government or bank doesn't uh, honor this one as a money, but uh, in underground, they are money. So they, they uh, say, that, okay, send by Bitcoin, but you got to pay some money to buy those Bitcoin. So that's a kind of a ransomware and that uh, damages uh, uh, the system sometimes, but uh, they are really causing harm. The poison cookie, what does this poison cookie means that Every time you log in to somebody's uh, uh, the um, website, then they are sending you small of the piece of code that contains uh, uh, the address and the uh, direct line. What it is is that once you visit certain uh, the uh, website, for example, it is uh, uh, the, a school and uh, you are very much interested in uh, just uh, uh, looking at the curriculum part of the website, then there is a sub menu and specific area. So if you are visiting them very frequently, then uh, it remembers it and sending you those location data to you. So that information goes to you in uh, the operating system and there's a certain storage. Actually, uh, our book talks about how to uh, find those, uh, uh, the uh, uh, location for the cookie. But the cookie is not uh, the uh, something that you are eating, but uh, the uh, uh, what that's, that's uh, given a name of the cookie. So uh, there's a little small bite of information. That's uh, what the cookie comes from, and uh, that uh, they give you the idea, uh, the uh, little bit of uh, uh, information on uh, that website and uh, the exact location of that uh, you are frequently accessing. So it is usually very helpful because uh, by having that uh, cookie, you can just uh, jump into that location much faster without clicking, clicking, clicking any time. So uh, uh, when you are frequently accessing certain sites, then it can be uh, very helpful. But bad guys are using that cookie as a mean of uh, uh, implanting or the, the uh, uh, putting some kind of a, a bad data into your account because uh, they are sending this little code to you. So uh, that is uh, known as a poison cookie. <laughs> a cookie is okay, but poison cookie is no good. That's the idea. And then key logger or dialer. Dialer is that uh, they are uh, what maybe one of the most important uh, asset for security is your password. But uh, the, uh, there are many ways that they can uh, find out or steal your password. But one of them is that uh, hard by hardware or by software that they remember your typing. When it's a password, you type something. So suppose that uh, your password is uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, something. That's a bad uh, password though. Uh, then uh, it's uh, remembering because uh, those are signals that are uh, over bytes. So the signals uh, that they capture that and aha, this is your password. So that key logger or th then uh, there is a way called the thing called uh, the uh, uh, dictionary attack that some people are making very simple uh, uh, the password, uh, your name, your ID. Some many people believe it or not, but so many people are making your uh, the uh, email ID and your password the same. 
Well, your password is P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. That's like that. That's frequent. So there are certain statistics. There are people just collecting all uh, the uh, passwords and selling it. <laughs> so a dictionary attack is just checking, checking that kind of a password and a good chance that you can get one of them. So in the case that they are to the try one, another one, another one. After, usually after three tries, it's uh, uh, the blocked. So uh, you try another time and again, again, again. Actually, the uh, some software the uh, stops those blocking and keep trying a thousand times and up getting yours. That's a scary, isn't it? Then uh, encryption, attack against encryption means that uh, the, it is uh, in the these days that all those messages you are sending over email and password, of course, and uh, the many other informations are encoded. Coded means that in a scrambled into different uh, characters. So you see some password, but that is all mixed up from the original in a certain way. So without knowing uh, the key or without knowing exactly how that happened, then you cannot get that data. But uh, the, uh, you can attack those encryption algorithms and end up getting the secret. That's the uh, another scary part. Then uh, email. So email can get have a, uh, the spam and then virus infector like that one. They can uh, put into the virus. So here are the a little more detailed one. It looks like a, a, I kind of a, uh, they explain the most of them, so poison cookie, and then uh, key logger, dialer, adware, the rogue security software. This is interesting one. Uh, they uh, pretend to be a free software, but actually it's a virus that happens. So by the way, what is virus? That's the software, little piece of software uh, that will uh, store stored into the your uh, computer storage and that uh, usually is uh, infecting means that it's uh, duplicating or staying there long and uh, keep sending uh, the uh, uh, unreasonable command to the system so that the system can get uh, uh, blocked up or malfunction for example that uh, the uh, one of those uh, simple code is that just a uh, uh, they have an infinite loop. So there's one command that's saying, uh, get the data, get the data, get the data, and uh, uh, they print the data, get the data, like that one, billion times per second, like that. Then computer got just uh, the um, straight from uh, the main normal work and just doing that. So that's no good. So that makes uh, your computer system go down. That's the idea. So that's a computer virus. And the worm is the kind of computer, the virus that go move around, infects through the network and uh, infecting your computer. Then uh, the Trojan horse. Yeah, this Trojan horse, you know, that uh, all the, uh, the uh, story about uh, the Trojan horses, that is that uh, in the uh, uh, war that uh, they, uh, retreated, they thought they retreat, but they left one big horse. Then the horse happened to be huge and inside there, there are soldiers, but it's a hidden. So, but the people from the uh, uh, this uh, town thought that it's uh, just uh, uh, the good presence just brought it in and that night that they came out. So that kind of um, old uh, story about uh, the uh, Trojan horse. So what it is, is uh, some bad enemy in your the uh, town or in your castle and that uh, at a certain time they will break it out. That's the whole idea. So uh, it's a virus and it will infect the system but it doesn't do anything for say a certain day and that it has some time clock. So say for example uh, on June 1st and suddenly it started activated then it will make a whole uh, hard drive uh, wiped out well, some virus make that, that uh, by spinning hard drive so fast by changing the voltage, they make a fire. That's very rare, but uh, that happened. That's called a pyrovirus. So that kind of thing that can happen. So uh, there are a lot of varieties. So uh, please just uh, take a look at it and uh, uh, say sorry about that. This is a cookie, but it's a bit cooly. 
then, yeah, so here's a, a Trojan horse that brought it in, inside the uh, castle, and then the, at the night, the soldiers uh, breaking out of the horse. Then there's a vaccine issue that these days uh, there's a corona uh, problem, that the COVID-19, so there's a vaccine. So what is vaccine? That's the kind of piece of code, uh, the piece of the virus that goes into your body and somehow that make your body be immune to the system. It's a very similar idea. Uh, the word of a vaccine comes from uh, vaca, that's uh, I think a Latin word, that's for the cow and the uh, strengthening the power of resisting by the horse. That's immunity. So what does immunity do is that it knows that what kind of code is a bad code. So at the, for a certain group, or what kind of a website or uh, the, uh, <coughs> the location is a bad uh, place. So it shouldn't enter that. What kind of a mail from uh, the, what kind of a, the, the mail coming from certain uh, the uh, sender is no good, then uh, it gives those lists. So uh, maintains black list and the white list. This is a safe list. This is a uh, dangerous list uh, so that uh, the, uh, they prevent their access from black list or allows only uh, the uh, messages from white list that kind of thing. So uh, the, uh, that's what the virus is doing. So Norton, uh, the uh, McAfee, and uh, uh, the, there are so many, the uh, Kaspersky's uh, like that, many uh, companies there, so the, who is making it. But more important is that uh, the uh, when, uh, like a Windows uh, operating system or Mac OS uh, operating system, uh, they are sending updates then make sure that that update usually has the vaccine or warning or some measures against those uh, uh, malwares. So uh, when as they come in and they collect the data, they make the countermeasures like make a vaccine itself and release it. So please update, please update. That's what uh, is uh, the uh, uh, the operating system uh, vendors are doing. And the DAS and the DDAS is the same thing. So denial of service. So denial of service means that here's one host site. Let me go to this uh, uh, the uh, diagram. Uh, this is a host. So this is uh, my bank or this is my the university uh, computer system, our computer system. Then what happened is that there are somehow there's a one guy uh, one person, uh, one, of course, the, the computer site, that is uh, sending the messages to access to this site over over. Then the, those accessing or connecting to your site has a limits. There are, you cannot have a million accesses, have, usually have a certain uh, limited number of access possible. So uh, the uh, suppose that you can have uh, uh, 5,000 uh, accesses at a given time, that's all you can handle, that depending on your system. Uh, but if you, the disperse, the, this, the uh, one bad guy, this is uh, the uh, intruder or attacker, uh, the, uh, sending out those uh, many computers, uh, the messages to many computers to uh, attack or try to log into this system. You heard about this certain website uh, when they got popular or they, uh, that uh, website um, uh, owner got a certain issue, social issues of uh, bad behavior or very good behavior, then people are just trying to access it and they, the system just goes down and cannot uh, they be accessed because of uh, overloaded. So that kind of thing uh, make it happening So by asking. So uh, even if that it allows only 5,000 accesses at a given time, that by duplicating some many other computers so many times so it gets uh, 10,000 uh, the request at a given time. Then the system cannot handle it and just uh, goes down and cannot open the so whole thing closed. So it cannot do it. If it, this is a bank or a university or some governmental uh, the, uh, site, 
then it is a problem because uh, we cannot have uh, uh, the bank, uh, uh, the, the, the website down for like five hours or three hours, depending on how long uh, this thing lasts. So what they do is they have somehow, uh, there's a tool and the software that making other computers connect to other computers. So like, uh, uh, say, 100 different computers they know nothing about it, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, it is being uh, sending to that 100. Each 100, they didn't know they are being used by someone. That's called the zombie, zombie computer. So even your computer can be used in this kind of attack. So it is called the springboard attack. So what does that do is that uh, there are many people, uh, many computers are without knowing because it's connected to the internet uh, that, that the, uh, they use your IP address that is your uh, the identifier of your computer uh, that uh, as a kind of a sending out the message without you knowing about it but the message you sending can be say uh, had what only 100 of those zombies but each one can uh, the, the send out like uh, the uh, 1000 each so if we can handle only 5,000, but uh, there's 100,000 uh, the uh, request or the attack coming in. So whole si system goes just uh, down. So that's like DDoS is a bomb. Uh, original, the denial of service is that uh, just a uh, one system, very powerful and a very large network, send those things uh, so that one system go down. It goes uh, uh, the uh, sites um, to uh, smaller allowances possible, but in mostly these days, uh, the, almost every DOS uh, the attack is a DDoS, a distributed denial of, of a, a service. So uh, the, the, even if that each the this one is very large amount of possible capacity of uh, simultaneous accesses. And even if that uh, each of this machine can handle only small number of uh, uh, requests, but if uh, there are so many zombies, then this is system will go down. That's the idea about this uh, uh, DDoS attack. So uh, the DDoS network, sometimes uh, uh, it is a zombie net, something like that. Uh, so uh, this uh, causes a lot of trouble these days. So uh, real-time attack map exists. So uh, if you, the, by all means, go tr click on uh, this, uh, uh, the sites, then they will have a real-time uh, maps of that what kind of attack is going on at this moment. Majority of this DDoS attack is uh, a kind of a repelled. They somehow stopped at the door, but at least they report to those attack. So it is all over the world. They got uh, the uh, collecting data and chart it out. So there are a couple of those. Uh, this is a, a live cyber threat. This one did us and some very serious attack and being successful, those things are uh, the, uh, listed in here. So this is less uh, uh, busy looking, but this uh, the, the gives some idea. So these are two of those websites that I showed you in previous pages. So uh, just uh, try that out, it's just uh, fun. <laughs> So what you can do is you can do the protection and then hackers will do, do countermeasures. So they have a, a password or entry code like that, but the key logger or dictionary attack window. Actually, there is thing called the rainbow attack, but I'm not gonna uh, talk about it because that involves a thing called the hashing uh, algorithm. So, but anyway, uh, there are many the uh, techniques made to uh, make the countermeasure your uh, password. So you got to be very careful and make your password uh, very uh, safe. It usually gives you some guideline, like eight characters or one more, have at least one uh, alphabet, the other of the capital letter, and another one of a, a lowercase, and some numbers, and sometimes uh, require, requiring you to have a special characters like that. Then the 
possibility of those uh, uh, random checking is just so hard that uh, the uh, chance of succeeding to cracking your password is much lower than you do uh, encryption so using the uh, photographic algorithm. So like RSA algorithm, that's uh, one public key, private key is used. That's pretty interesting subjects about uh, this uh, uh, way that is uh, hard to crack. The, the one problem is that you heard about quantum computer. So quantum computer is a new technology and they are developing and maybe in use within maybe five, 10 years, then that can, uh, that become like a thousand or so a million times faster than current computers. So they can try every possibility and they will end up uh, the uh, cracking yours. So they have one of the, uh, they also a whole bunch of uh, countermeasures again, uh, uh, they call it against those, uh, the uh, quantum computers. Then there's a vaccine against malware Then they given that they come out with a new strain, different kind of uh, the uh, malware so that the old vaccine doesn't work. Then, oh, I didn't talk about the firewall. Firewall is the safety, uh, the wall. So your tip, Think about this way, you have a, uh, the routers or your network connector, then there's a certain protection uh, location. Easiest way I can explain is that this one does a filtering of any outside uh, uh, the uh, input or outside the attempt to enter. So they have a black list and a white list. Remember those are black list, white list. So uh, when there's a certain black list, they stop it. Or there's a certain pattern of uh, uh, abnormality, then it blocks. So firewall is usually be there to stop any kind of suspicious uh, intrusions. So that's uh, uh, the uh, uh, higher firewall, but even that can be hacked. The install operating system updates, that's important. And then uh, you need the auditing and the forensic. Actually, every time you using your computer, somewhere, someplace, there is a whole record of everything you're doing. So uh, there's some auditing method you can do by hand or by your uh, manually, but it takes forever. There's a software that has a certain uh, failed attempts too many times, it'll pop it out, or there's a certain uh, abnormal uh, activities, then it will uh, detect it. Then there's a thing called the social engineering. Social engineering is a different kind of attack. What it is, is a, uh, our book talks a little bit about the social engineering, uh, is that it's nothing to do with the social engineering. I think I have a, uh, some uh, the uh, slide maybe later. Then physical measures idea will look up like that. This is the slide that I showed you in a previous lesson that some of the email uh, operation has uh, some difficult moments of uh, or most of them are hacking and uh, bad uh, messages. Uh, and uh, some of them are like a spamming that is uh, sending out same uh, message or the junk mail over and over. And the phishing is the some kind of a way of uh, luring you into uh, the uh, some kind of a uh, foolish act so that you get uh, uh, certain uh, the, uh, uh, the damage on your system. Then there's a farming that redirecting websites like that. So they have a different spelling. But anyway, uh, the uh, we will a little bit talk, talking a little bit about the spamming and the phishing. Uh, first of all, anti phishing, that is that they tried to lure something. So our book also has this guideline. So if we have a uh, the bad, uh, the uh, how do you know the bad email? So I said that there are uh, the uh, attack through the email and if you open uh, the, without thinking or uh, the, by mistake then it can cause you a real problem because uh, that uh, brings you all the viruses and uh, your personal information, sensitive financial information will be revealed and they can exploit for their own uh, benefit. 
So you got to be careful. So several things. First of all, uh, that when you get an email, that if you don't know who that guy from, then just to check. Oh, wow, well, this guy is, I never had this email before. This is uh, another personal uh, email that I have never seen. It's just like a phone call that you never heard of uh, or the unexpected uh, the numbers never unknown. Uh, then uh, the, uh, you may feel sus suspicious and whenever possible, then don't uh, open it. Then uh, that you want to check a little bit more than that is that uh, is that uh, really spam or not? Some of them is legitimate. That's okay, but uh, maybe wrong one. I what you do is uh, put your um, the uh, put your the uh, uh, cursor. This is called cursor, isn't it? So the cursor onto the uh, uh, this um, those email address part. Then you see the here mail to and then the in that case the user uses this is company the uh, username and this is company name so called and see how long and unusual it is this is a spam usually so uh, the uh, uh, whenever you have uh, some kind of uh, uh, the uh, suspicious mail then move your uh, the cursor over. That's called hoovering over uh, this uh, uh, the address line. Then you will see very long funny things. Uh -huh. Something's wrong. Then uh, the uh, does a mail contains uh, uh, any uh, the attachment and uh, uh, that is not expected. If uh, someone says I'm attaching my documentation for you or the uh, picture there or you know you are expecting that then it's okay but something it is uh, the attached then it is uh, uh, suspicious so it's the best that you don't open it. If uh, you did not you don't open and it was important enough then later the other person will send it again with the proper message. So it's better than missing or delaying uh, some uh, the legal uh, the document than uh, the, uh, just uh, clicking and then uh, the computer got infested with the virus. Then uh, the, the is a message make any sense? Some of them just don't understand what he's talking about. Of course, that one of the most common, uh, the widely known is a Nigerian uh, the mail that's saying that, that I'm a prince of the country and I have uh, the five million dollars because we have a diamond, uh, the, the mine and blah blah like that. And uh, I got so much money, but it is uh, locked by uh, U.S. bank. So if you lend your uh, bank account, then I'll share half of those uh, rent. <laughs> that's a real scam. That's a really cheating. So uh, the, the uh, message doesn't make sense or some the gibberish or there are a lot of misspelling then it is a good sign of somebody did it in a hurry and uh, uh, not uh, the uh, uh, serious uh, the message. And if uh, uh, do not open it and if careful the opening attachment and check a lock symbol on the top of your address mail that is a lock symbol in here. So just uh, uh, check if uh, this one uh, the HTTP is uh, uh, the uh, hypertext uh, transfer protocol that's uh, what the website is and then uh, good old days was a uh, colon slash slash like that one but these days it's always there's an S here so for secure, secure HTTP and then it has a lock symbol here so just to check on it so you don't have to do that for every email but whenever you feel something is funny then it's a good idea to check on it. Social engineering is uh, nothing to do with the engineering but manipulating psychological manipulation of human to gain access to uh, confidential info is uh, social engineering. So when you hear about the word uh, social engineering is that somebody just by person, by letter, by phone call, by some way that, that they try to give you out uh, this uh, important information. So if a very nice uh, looking person come in, oh yeah, I need a login, can, 
can I log in your system for a minute and blah, blah, blah. Then I just be careful. That's the, about the social engineering. That's the psychological manipulation. Then there's uh, the uh, ethical and uh, social issues. So I say uh, computer has a big power, just like, just like a medical doctors who are, whose work is so important and impacting, impacting somebody's lives. So they have a social responsibility and ethical uh, responsibility. They shouldn't do the work for money or when there is an emergency, life is in danger. They got to be very uh, the kind of uh, empathetic to the person, that kind of idea. So uh, the, uh, as long as you got a power, then you need uh, some kind of responsibility. Politicians must have about social uh, responsibility and ethical responsibility. You may say, oh, not, oh, not that true, but uh, they, uh, they should have it. So computer scientists or computer users also have uh, uh, the uh, responsibility. So everybody is in a way have a big power. You can spread out so much of a bad seed to so many people. So do not create or dis distribute malware, of course. Then software products are the uh, result of hard work by professionals. So, so do not illegally use them. There's an open source, free and open source software we talked about in uh, when we're talking about software at the uh, before. But uh, the uh, when it is a software that needing uh, the money or that they charging something, then you must pay the due price. And uh, uh, the uh, companies use the DRM, Digital Rights Management. So DRM, what does that, that do? Like uh, Microsoft does a lot. There's so much of a piracy on the uh, Microsoft software. So uh, they have a special number with, a, and uh, unless you have that special number, serial number, uh, you cannot install or you cannot run your software. Uh, and uh, somebody tried to use that same special number, then it doesn't work because they have a master list that say it's being already used. So uh, they, uh, they are controlling this uh, digital rights management quite a bit. And uh, the, uh, I have seen so many uh, students and people who say, who's using uh, the Windows operating system or Office, uh, like uh, the PowerPoints or Word, but usually the uh, when it does it doesn't have a legal uh, the uh, legal right, then top line or bottom line there is a uh, uh, some note saying that you uh, you have an issue with a, a software copyright or licensing so on so on. So don't uh, do that. Uh, that's called the piracy. Then also that the intellectual property in the, in the internet there are so many information, so many great things, and so many PowerPoints like that. So majority of people are saying that it's okay, you can use it, but there are very frequently there are also a lot of uh, material are copyrighted because it is uh, uh, the intellectual property they created and very special for them. So that honor that uh, copyright for their product, products and give proper credit. So good thing is that still you can use it. It's a free, you don't have to pay. Most of the intellectual property is not. But all you have to do is that this is from somewhere. So very often you have a C and something, or well, from was the, uh, you just uh, write down the where you got it. So a reference and the www like that or a source from www something like that. Then obey netiquette. Netiquette is edge cat on the network. So these days there are some spams or the, when you are doing your reply to certain messages, then uh, your language can be terrible because uh, you have uh, anonymity. You, you don't reveal your identity. So you just uh, say something very bad, sometimes false accusation uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, harm others. Uh, this is, uh, I'm sorry, there's a, this is uh, my fault in the net. Uh, so so the uh, irritating, uh, the harmful, harming others in the net, that's uh, you, something you have to be careful. So that's uh, more of social issues. There are so many things we can discuss, but 
to pass it by. Then on the last topic I'm going to talk about is that ergonomics. Ergo is that your kind of a body science more like that. So you, you may have heard that or seen the ad for Ergo uh, keyboard like that. So your body is uh, made such a way. Computer is not uh, sometimes not made for your sizes. So uh, I'm sure that you are always complaining that, oh, well, smartphone is so uh, small and convenient. That's great. But uh, the, uh, the keyboard is so small that it's, uh, my finger is not that small. It's uh, so hard to use it. That kind of a, uh, the complaint you may have. But more importantly, that uh, the uh, these days that people are sitting in front of the computer so long time, so many, so many hours. So it can strain, first of all, your eyes. You know, eyesight is uh, uh, so important. And uh, if you ruin it, it's very difficult. But we see so many people wearing glasses and the eye uh, trouble like that. And your sitting posture may be bad. So uh, your spine is getting bad and they are oh, all they oh, how they pain whenever you're walking and uh, like that. And your muscle got a pain and your bone may be, uh, your bone on not only the spine, but your leg bone and your fingers and the neck like that. So the bone may be getting and the muscle get uh, strained and your neck. And then also very uh, frequent that there are some people whose uh, job is entering the data like a call center or data and uh, the processors that they're typing all day long and uh, your uh, wrist has a certain angle there's a muscle and the blood vessel going through the bone inside this, uh, the tube in the bone. And when you have a certain uh, the angle all the time, then what happens is that uh, there is a, uh, the bone is a kind of a, uh, become solidified in certain direction and squeeze those hole. So those are muscles and uh, blood vessel may be squeezed and straighten. In other words, the, the uh, hole must be this big, but they got uh, squeezed in like that. So they end up getting so much pain and difficult to, to use it. They end up just going to the surgery for the hand. That's uh, also painful and uh, really bad. So uh, be careful about the, your wrist. Then uh, the uh, but most serious is eye strain. So uh, the, uh, I have a few tips for the, uh, good eye, the uh, relieving eye strain. First of all, the distance from the screen is important. So uh, the guideline is that this arms length. So uh, the, uh, when you set, set properly, then it's a barely touching your uh, the screen with your hands. And uh, sometimes the, some screen are the big, some are small. The bigger, uh, the you should be on the back side. So they frequently say the five times, so they are five times of the uh, diagonal distance, but sometimes that's not true. But anyway, uh, there's a top bigger, you got to go backward, the uh, stay away. Then harsh lighting must be uh, the uh, avoided so no direct uh, lamp that you can see so shining your eye directly no good and then your uh, screen is too bright and uh, uh, the the intensity is of uh, complete white bright white that is uh, tiring your eyes then adjust the height so that your eyes are looking at the top of the mind so just looking up all the time or to down all the time is not good problem is that your gaze and your posture will be fixed for a setup that you if you are not, if your screen location wouldn't change your chair wouldn't change for the duration of three four five hours uh, so uh, the in the case that uh, you got to set it up in the beginning such a way that when you look straight then you see the top line of the screen or your monitor that's uh, the general tip and the uh, follow 20 20 20 rule that is every 20 minutes rest your eyes for 20 seconds 
but uh, by looking at uh, the uh, faraway objects. Reason why this is happening is that your eye is uh, gazing at actually the closer range when you are watching uh, some uh, the objects or you are reading the screen, then your eyeball is uh, uh, squeezed actually it's a squeeze uh, this way so that uh, the, your uh, lens your eye lens will be adjusted to the focus and usually squeeze closer one that you squeeze it make it thicker and uh, looking farther away long distance then it will be relaxing kind of so uh, when you are reading a book or a screen then your eyes are uh, the muscle is squeezing in but it cannot do it forever. But many people don't even barely blinking it and then uh, just uh, squeezing on the same location, not even changing it. So the muscle stays and being tired. When that goes on day after day, then they got really losing their ability to control. So they end up getting, uh, you got to have eyeglasses or even more serious uh, eye uh, problem. So uh, the uh, 20, 20, 20 rule is every 20 minutes that uh, rest to your eyes for 20 seconds. But when you are the resting your 20 seconds, either close your eyes or watch, look at the uh, object far away, at least 20 feet away or the, uh, the mountain on the, out there. But wanted to have a 20, 20, 20, so 20 feet away like that. Huh? This is a very important for little kids also because uh, uh, young guys uh, that they especially playing game on a, uh, the, um, uh, the their tablet or uh, the computer, then uh, their eyes are just uh, fixed hour after hour. Uh, there's the average uh, the in uh, recent that is uh, 20. Uh, 18 uh, the survey says that the uh, age uh, between 15 to 20 of those uh, uh, the youngsters uh, who's spending at least seven and a half hours a day in uh, watching this screen so we say oh minimize the screen time screen time like, like that huh? and uh, the make sure that your font size and the color and the uh, uh, the spacing, those things that make your uh, the uh, display, the uh, size and the color being uh, the uh, such a way is a comfortable, comfortable to read. So uh, just to make uh, your eyes being rested as much as possible and minimize the staring at the screen, try to blink and sometimes uh, rolling your eyes like that. On. Of course, when you're playing game, then you don't want to miss any movement, so you are staring very much. So be careful. And this is general guideline about say that how the posture goes. So eyes go on the top of the line, and then you have a straight, and the leg must touch it, and your hand must go fixed like that, and the. Uh, and then there's a seating and you, got, you need the padding. So make sure that your chair can be adjustable. Screen can be uh, the height or uh, the angle be adjustable. So please read this portion as you can. So conclusion that uh, the, uh, we know that this uh, digital revolution time, 21st century especially is, and the comp comp computer application is out the uh, really essential part of our lives. We are dealing with the computer all the time. And uh, uh, because of information techn technology, uh, there's so much of uh, the uh, benefit, but there are also some bad effect it can be. So uh, the, uh, the security is important. We got to be aware of it. And we got to have a social uh, the responsibility obligation uh, not to do any harm by uh, the, uh, making others uh, being uh, the, uh, disadvantaged or the, uh, damaged by this. And uh, uh, the, we have, uh, when you are working very extended, extended time, the, because that's what happens to most of people when you are doing homework and typing. And, uh, uh, the, uh, sometimes you are reading a textbook on a screen, then you try to make it uh, uh, as less stressful to your body and especially to your eyes. 
So that's all, and uh, this uh, eighth uh, uh, last day module is the end of our uh, whole series of introduction to computer system. And I thank you folks for the uh, listening and the coming this far with me. And this is first time I ever did the course by this uh, series of a recording, uh, even if I did a portion of it, but uh, the whole series just by uh, the, um, uh, this uh, PowerPoint recording is a kind of a new experience. And uh, I have uh, no idea how you receive it. And sometimes I have uh, no time to talk talk to you and get any feedback from you uh, saying some joke that uh, time the chances are missed so uh, I hope that uh, the, this uh, COVID situation will go over and someday we see again then hopefully we see person to person and get a free talking free discussion hands-on experience especially for the computer related skills so uh, the, uh, that time is uh, coming up hopefully uh, otherwise that uh, the, uh, again thanking you for the listening and uh, uh, paying attention to there are so many uh, parts of the book that I left out because of time strain uh, but please um, uh, the, uh, try to read the book and get more information from the uh, other sources okay thanks so much and uh, have a good day and have a good semester bye